went from doing $10 million in 2020 to doing $30 million in 2022 to $50 million in 2023 to $100 million. So let's go back to the beginning. Where you, just how it all started, man. I was kind of a bad kid. You know, I ran with a rough crowd. I had gone to rehab. I had been in trouble with the police a few times. I knew that I needed to make a change in my life and move in another direction. Peter calls me up. He tells me, Ty, I figured out this way to make money online. And that weekend, I spent two days just learning everything that he knew up to that point. I get my campaign set up with him that weekend. And then the next weekend, I see a commission come in on my phone. It was at that point that I was immediately hooked. It was just huge. I mean, at, at one point I remember going on spring break and I type up an email and I press the send button and within 30 minutes, about $7,000 in commissions just wow. rolled in. I spent six months grinding the hardest I've grinded in my entire life. I would wake up every morning, I would open my computer, I would see hundreds of messages in each thread and I would go to the bathroom and I would puke my fucking guts out. And then I would go into the office and I would handle it. On the outside, it looks easy, right? It looks great, but you destroy your, your life, your health, your relationship. It's been a lot of up and down in this industry, but like to me, it feels like I'm just getting started and it, and it feels like there's so much more of this journey that's yet to play out. Get ready to level your shit up with the LFG Show. We travel the globe to bring you heavy hitters from all walks of life. We've been talking some serious business from the best digital marketers, government contracting experts, to top athletic and celebrity doctors. We've got it all covered. We're talking to guys with cash in for billions with a B. And the best thing is we're just getting started. So hold on tight. We're about to crank it up a notch. Get ready for next level networking and masterminds within the LFG community. Scared money don't make no money or honey. Hit the subscribe button. Drop a like, leave a comment, and let's fucking go. LFG, man, what a day. We're at Contact IO in Denver. Phenomenal day. We got a really special guest. This guy, I've been wanting to get him on the show for a while. We had his brother, Peter Day, on. Short interview with him at ASC a couple weeks ago. And these guys are doing great things. They, they're really like OGs. You guys are young, but you're like really like OGs in this space. This is going to be a great episode. We got Tyler Day, the president of uh, Optimize Convert. It's fucking pumped to have you on the Let's show, go, man. David. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. And we were just Sites. on stage. We were just on stage. Um, we, we gave a goat award out. We had an actual goat on stage. He shot a fucking T-shirt gun, almost had to milk a goat. Uh, didn't, <laughs> that didn't happen, though, fortunately. But... That was fun. You did, you did great out there, by the way. That was great for people to hear your experience as the one that's been yeah. doing this for so long. Awesome. Yeah. 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 And I, I, you know, we're going to get into more detail about that here now. Um, yeah. Thank you for having me on. No, you're welcome. It's great it's to have you on the show. Yeah. So we're going to go back to the beginning, man. I, when we were on stage, I talked about how, you know, you got a 12, you made 120 bucks as an affiliate marketer and you're excited about that. And that's where it started. You were only like, what, 12 or 13 years old when that happened. And so let's go back to the beginning where you, just how it all started, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't quite that young, but I got into affiliate marketing when I was um, a senior in high school. Yeah. I was 17. And at that time, I was coming out of a period of my life that was very dark. So in high school, I was kind of a bad kid. You know, I ran with a rough crowd. Um, I had gone to rehab. I had been in trouble with the police a few times. And my brother was a a pivotal mentor in my life at that time where he had given me a personal development book. I forget the name of the book. It was by someone named Danny Johnson. And she had this story where she had gone through similar struggles to me. Like she was a drug addict and she, you know, was at a lowest of the low point and then had a big turnaround in her life. And I basically pivoted from what I was doing and, you know, the bad shit that I was doing to actually wanting to change my life and I wanted to be better and went from sort of misbehaving all the time and, and getting into nonsense to, you know, getting out of school every day and going to the gym and that became my new out outlet. And that was really like the start of my personal development journey of just changing my mindset to, to have healthier habits of, you know, every day going into the gym, which is something that I still do to this date, and 
and reading personal development content, which is something I still do every day to date. And I spent about sort of six months just getting my mind and my body right and eliminating some of the vices and the habits that were taking me off track and derailing my life and sort of distance myself from people that weren't a good influence on me. I had one of my close friends go to jail. That was a big wake up call. I had another close friend pass away and, and it was a big wake up call. And I knew that I needed to make a change in my life and move in another direction. And at that point, Peter was in college and Peter was always a hustler, you know, and Peter's three years older than me. So he was at that point, a sophomore in college. And Peter had been up, you know, late at night with bloodshot eyes, Google searching, you know, how to make money online and was just desperate to figure it out. And Peter had bought this course from a Google search that was teaching affiliate marketing. And at the end of the course, it gave the opportunity to promote the course as an affiliate. And one of the methods that it taught was running ads on search. To, to basically promote this make money online program, right? So Peter, being the, the smart, savvy guy that he is, immediately figured it out and right away had a search campaign that was spitting out profit for him and was making money for him. Not to some big, big degree, but, you know, a couple grand a month in profit, that kind of thing. So Peter calls me up, he tells me, Ty, I figured out, you know, this way to make money online. He's, a, he's in college, right? And that weekend, I was working a job. I was working a retail job. They had me scheduled to work uh, that weekend, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I told the boss, like, I'd want to go visit my brother. They didn't give me the weekend off. They just mm -hmm. said, screw you, and kind of booked me anyway, yeah. you know, even though I, I asked for the time off. And I just didn't show up. <laughs> so right. I, I go up to my brother's. How old were you at this time? 17. Okay. Yeah. I, I just blew off the job that I had and, and went to my brother's apartment at UConn where he was at college and spent two days just learning everything that he knew up to that point, which was basically running search campaigns, collecting an email address, building a autoresponder, like a 10 day autoresponder and selling this course, you know, mm. and I, I get my campaign set up with him that weekend on Bing search. I get my email list set up. I get my autoresponder series set up. Um, I had $200 in my bank account. I, I, you know, put a $20 per day budget on wow. the Bing campaign. I, uh, you know, went back and you know went to class for the week and then the next weekend i was you know at a at a campfire or something like i was hanging out with a buddy and i see a commission come in on my phone it was mm. a small commission you know 120 bucks or something like that right but at the, the at, at that point for me everything clicked yeah. at, at that point i was euphoric you know of course i had spent some money and and whatnot to generate that but it wasn't shortly after that that a bigger commission came in because there was an upsell. So they bought the first product for 120, then they went and bought a thousand dollar product, and I earned, you know, an eight or nine hundred dollar commission on that. And it was at that point that I was immediately hooked, and I knew that this was something that I wanted to do and in, in my path forward um, for my life. So. At that point forward, I was, I was rocking and rolling. I had about, you know, a $200 per month budget that I could spend on Bing ads. And in return, that would make me maybe about like $1,000 a month or something wow. in revenue. And, you know, that's not a lot. And, and uh, for, you know, I ended up getting into a good college. I, I got into College of Charleston and was in my dorm room and basically spent, you know, half the day going to class and I spent six to 10 hours a day, just doing anything I could affiliate marketing related. So I had my little search campaign that was running and then I was, I didn't have much other money to spend on marketing. I, any other profit that came from the search campaign was just spent on like food and just mm. regular shit that I, you know, uh, it's not much money, right? So I needed to, to generate more things and I started doing SEO. I started busting my ass doing five 
entire blog articles a day that would be keyword based articles like make money online type stuff to try to sell this co- this coaching you know course that I was promoting on Bing through organic traffic and it ended up going nowhere and you know I spent basically 2 years about 3 years completely spinning my wheels. I would make a little bit of commission when a sale would come in and I would, at that, at that point, there were all these different traffic sources. At that point, the narrative was, oh, you need to test all of these traffic sources. It wasn't just Facebook. It wasn't just one thing that you tested. It was, you need to find these traffic sources. That was kind of the narrative that I was following at the time. So it was, okay, I made a thousand dollars. Let's deposit the thousand dollars into traffic vans or whatever, which was like a pops ad network that required like a thousand dollar minimum burn through that money, trying to figure out pops. Okay. Now I'm back to square one. Like, you know, let's go work at the restaurant. Let's go fill up some water glasses and make another thousand dollars. And then I would try something else. I tried a direct mail campaign. I had saved up five grand or something like that. And I, um, figured out how to buy a list of addresses and get a postcard design and sent out some postage piece to however many people and, and lost all that money, right? Yeah. So it was like two, it was about three years of, of basically complete trial and error where I had some little wins here and there, but overall didn't make any money and just straight up failed. And at one point I, through the grapevine, I heard about this guy that was offering one-on-one coaching and got connected with him and me and Peter pooled our money together. We both didn't have much at the time. I think we, we somehow managed to pull together maybe $3,000 between the two of us. And we actually paid our first official real one-on-one mentor for legit coaching on what he was doing at the time, which was rent to own lead gen. And, uh, this was all about doing something similar to what we were doing. He was running ads on Bing and generating his own leads on his own landing page for an email submit to where then it, somebody would type in their email and then it would redirect into another offer link that paid four bucks or something for an email submit. So it was the, the most janky setup. We didn't even know that you could pass an email through and have it pre-pop into another yeah. page. It was like they would type an email, it would redirect into the offer link, and they would type the same email in again. But it somehow worked, you know? And um, it was the first campaign that actually just cracked off for us. And immediately we were spending money and making back, you know, 50%, 100% ROI on the spend. And it was scalable because this was a nationwide lead gen campaign for an area that was in extremely high demand, which was basically affordable rent to own housing. And there was not that much competition on the search. You know, we could get a lot of spend out of it. So me and Peter immediately started applying for credit cards and we got, we each got a credit card that maybe had a $10,000 limit within one week had spent 20,000 made back 30,000. We were on weekly pay with the network. So essentially we were able to scale this campaign extremely fast because we were making a high margin. We were getting paid weekly. We were paying off our credit card weekly. And within 30 days went from having three grand in our bank account to doing you know, three grand a day revenue, nice. making like maybe a thousand bucks a day in profit or something like that. And, um, and how old were you guys at this time? At that Early point, 20s maybe? yeah, I mean, at that point I was about 20 years old. Wow. So all That's the way incredible. from 17 to 20, I was doing that. And I think I was a junior, it was like beginning of my junior year of college. Wow. So we were able to scale the heck out of this. We ended up learning about Facebook ads. And at the time, Facebook ads were so cheap. Our ad was quite literally a stock photo of a house (laughs) that talked about affordable housing and the clicks were five cents. Wow. So we were printing money all of a sudden. We were collecting our own leads 
on an email list and very quickly started to add 5,000 leads, 10,000 leads a day onto our own email list that we owned. And it was just huge. I mean, at, at one point I remember going on spring break and sending out an email blast to my email list. And I was with just some friends of mine, like we're, we're in Puerto Rico on a surf trip. And um, I'm, I'm like hanging out with a buddy. I open up my computer. I'm like, do you want me to show you how I make money? And he's like, sure. And I just, I, I type up an email, like a 10 line email, yeah. which was like, you know, an EDU email that I was cross promoting to the list, right? And I press the send button and within 30 minutes, about $7,000 in commissions just wow. rolled in. And I, I was like, okay, cool. That's my work for the day. I'm, uh, let's go surf now. And, you know, it's like, like what? Like, <laughs> you know, um, so, so that was, uh, that was our first real banger campaign. We ended up generating literally tens of millions of leads onto our own first party email list. And we ended up running that campaign for probably three to five years before that, that offer, that whole rent to own vertical sort of died out. Um, at one point it just sort of dried up, like the buyers pulled out of it. Mm -hmm. Um, so at that point now that's, you know, we're talking maybe, you know, around 2014 from that initial success. And it was maybe around 2019 that, that offer kind of burnt out for us. Um, towards the tail end of that campaign, we had launched a course where we had showed people this method of promoting lead gen offers and collecting your own leads on your email list. And, um, we partnered with Charles No on that course, who was an OG in the space and he helped us promote it to his audience. And we ended up getting about three or 400 students, um, enrolled in the course, which was a high ticket program. And, you know, at that point, the, the campaign was kind of dying out. We had, you know, three or 400 people that had gone through this program. And we were, we were kind of wondering like what our next step was. And all of the people that were going through this program, they were all like, okay, well, where, who are the buyers? Can you introduce us to these networks? Where do we get these offers to promote, right? So at that point, it became the next chapter of our career where we went from being affiliates to owning an affiliate network um, and becoming brokers in a sense, um, which I know, you know, from what I heard about your story, you have some, ex you know, very similar yeah, experience. Yeah, very similar. So I basically private messaged one-on-one -on -one all three or 400 students and within a 30 day period of time enrolled three or 400 affiliates to, to become affiliates with our network. But this was around, you know, 2019, ish like end of 2019 going into 2020 and that was like that was one of the most challenging periods of my life even to this date because at that point we hadn't learned how to build a team yet up to that point it had just been me and peter sort of making this this easy money you know blasting out our email list once a day and and running this one campaign and to go from that to then having 300 affiliates where it was just me and Peter in the beginning, it was just me and him. I was the affiliate manager for the 300 affiliates and Peter was quite literally not sleeping because he was the one issuing the payments to all of them and, and making sure that we were getting paid. Right. It was just, how many people were in your company at the time? Was this YouTube? It was or? literally just the two of wow. us. Yeah. So Peter then hired our first real employee that, which was, an accounting person who still works with us today, mm -hmm. who we basically trained on doing the payments for the network because that was taking him so yeah, much time. Stuff. Yeah, stuff. Yeah. It's, it's... But I was, I was still managing all these affiliates. And that was the hardest point in my life. You know, I had just every single area of my life started to sort of crumble because all I could do all day was just do calls and message people, right? So I, you know, made this impulsive decision to break off my relationship with my girlfriend at the time, who is now my wife, right? But I was like, listen, I'm, you know, I just don't, I, I can't put the, the time into the relationship that you deserve. 
I just need to focus on the business, which at the time was a huge mistake, right? Mm. And spent six months grinding the hardest I've grinded in my entire life. I mean, I would literally wake up in the morning at the crack of dawn and have 40, 50 people that wanted to get on calls with me, that wanted, needed direction, that needed technical things done for them, offer links open, strategy sessions, whatever, right? And I would wake up every morning, I would open my computer, I would see 50 unread threads from 50 different people with hundreds of messages in each thread that I was the one responsible for responding to. And I would go to the bathroom and I would puke my fucking guts out. And then I would go into the office and I would handle it. And I would come home at 11 at night and do it all again the next day. And I did that for maybe like six months. And then COVID hit. And, you know, at the time we were running lead gen. And at, when COVID hit, all of the call centers for lead gen shut down. And the, the offers literally shut off. So we had a huge business at that time. I mean, it was... You know, we were booking at that point $10 million a year in business with a two-person company, right? Oh. But I had destroyed my entire life. And, and I let the work basically destroy me. I mean, I, I wasn't taking care of myself. I, you know, had destroyed my perfectly good relationship, you know. And it was at that point that it was a big wake-up call for me. And, you know, I, I fortunately was able to win back my girlfriend, you know, said my now wife, when I had this epiphany that that was a huge mistake and that I should have never done that. And then I began putting um, more of an effort into building a team to then, you know, because obviously it wasn't going to be sustainable at that rate. I mean, you know, we were doing a lot of business, but I, I, I don't know. I, you know, I wasn't capable of, of, of doing it. It was more work than, than two people could possibly ever handle, right? Um, and a lot of balls were getting dropped. I mean, there'd be, you know, 30 people that messaged me in a single day that were affiliates of ours that I wouldn't even get to reply to until like three days later. And at that point, they're just like, all right, like, screw you. Like, you know, so at that point, it became a next chapter of our life, which is building a team. And we ended up only really operating that network for about one or two years because there was just some, you know, the, the network model was not great for us. I mean, um, there were just some issues with it, a variety of different issues around just working with that many affiliates and the, the advertisers that you're working with. Um, they don't really want the traffic from affiliates. They wanted it from internal teams and the affiliates were just running dirty stuff. And I would show affiliates my winning campaigns and the next day they would just like stab me in the back and circumvent us and go direct. And like, I was just like, you know what? Like at, at the time we were running, we had maybe like two or three media buyers that were internal on the team. And I said, you know, me and Peter decided that we were going to basically shelf the affiliate network model and just focus only on building our internal team and basically build it into a bigger company, but with the right model of, um, I mean, obviously people run successful networks and if you were an affiliate that we had to cut off, you know, my, my apologies, my condolences, you know, it's nothing personal. Um, but the right direction for us, we decided was to just run it with the smaller team of internal media buyers where we had better oversight over them. There was loyalty. They weren't, you know, circumventing us the next day. They weren't running things that we had no idea that they were running. We could have full control over the creatives, um, and really, you know, build a long-term business like that. And, and that became another chapter for us starting in 2021, where we basically stopped being brokers and went back to being affiliates and, and put a big effort into building a team and building it into a, into a much, much bigger company. Age data, there's only a few months left of this. A lot of different ways to monetize data. Data is a very broad term. There's a lot more money in it. You already spent the money. Let's just say it costs you $10 for a Medicare lead. You make a million dollars in sales, you really only made a hundred thousand bucks. And you might not get paid by your advertiser. What if I can get an extra 50 cents, dollar, or two dollar, three dollar per lead in perpetuity? What does that do to my marketing campaign? What does that do for the stress of the profits of my company? A percentage or two at those kind of numbers are huge yep. as moving the needle. So for us, what I love about age data, the, the, the hard part's already been done. Now it's just a revenue left for your company. What would the extra 10, 20, $30,000 a week do 
for your business. Absolutely. All of our big partners are making hundreds of thousands, if not millions a year with us. They're never going to have this gold rush again. Yeah, it's an incredible story. I mean, God, I, you know, this is not, on the outside, it looks easy, right? But, but people don't, you, you, you went deep there. You got, you, got, you got vulnerable talking about, hey, 10 million in revenue, two people. That's great, right? It looks great, but you destroy your, your life, your health, your relationship, and your yeah. wife's a saint. I mean, obviously for her, and it's kind of good. She saw what you went through and like she, and she stuck through it, right? And it's what it comes down to. So I appreciate you being vulnerable because a lot of people don't talk about that stuff, you know? They don't, and that's what we want to talk about on the show is that it's not all roses, man. It's to get to that point, to get to the numbers you guys are putting, to get to the, you know, the dozen media buyers, whatever you have here, you have to go through that shit, man. And totally. And were there yeah. any points where you're like, fuck, I'm, I'm just going to give up on this? I'm like, uh, did you ever, did that ever cross your mind at all? Or, I, I think or when the COVID, like, yeah. I think when the COVID crash happened, it was like probably the darkest month of my life because, you know, not only had I basically blown up my personal life, like trying to just basically spin up all this revenue, yeah. but then it all went to zero and I didn't know when it was going to come back. I mean, <laughs> they had said it was a seven day lockdown. Then it turned into a two week lockdown. Then it turned into a 30 day lockdown. I'm like, fuck, like, is this going to be a whole fucking year? Like. I, I just yeah. ruined my fucking life to get my business to this point and it's all shut off, you know? So it was at that point, it was one of the first like points in my life where I was just like, I don't know if I could like do this. You know what I mean? And, and you know, fortunately I, I got my priorities realigned. I had some, you know, was able to think through it all, you know, once all of kind of the, the fear of COVID dissipated and, and you know, the business started to pick back up again, but I decided from that point that I was I was never gonna let the ball slip through my hands in that sense where I was gonna destroy my life to make money. You know, yeah. I think that you know it's all there. Everything has to be in equilibrium. You know what I mean? A lot of people will only focus on the money, and they will spend all of their time and effort to just be on top of the money pile or to be doing better than somebody else and make their entire life around that. But there's more to life than just money. You know, there's, you need meaningful relationships. You need your own health, you know, yeah. I mean, right. So it was at that point that at first I, I had this sort of like negative view of just like, ah, like, fuck this. Like, you know, I don't, I can't do this or whatever. To then being like, okay, no, I am going to do it and I'm going to do it right. And I'm going to do this in a way that, you know, has equilibrium with all these different areas of my life. And I'm, and I'm going to mm. try to crush it in all of these areas. So when I got back with my girlfriend, I immediately just fully committed to that. Like we had been, you know, in a really, you know, unserious kind of dicey spot in our relationship. I said, screw that. Like you're moving in with me. Like we're going to get married. That's what wow. I told her, like immediately when we got back together, you know, and she was just like, wow, like, okay, like, I, you know, are you serious about this? And like, you know, I even like went and, and, you know, told that to her parents and they're like, are you sure? Like, are, you know, like, are, <laughs> I was just like, yes, like, this is it. Like, I'm, you know, we're fully committed now. Like, this is what we're doing. And, you know, at the same time, I fully committed to, to building my business again in a way that was like sustainable for long-term growth. You know, the affiliate model was good for spinning up short-term revenue, yeah. but the revenue was only as good as, you know, the affiliates were loyal or the, or the offer was live, right? I mean, once your one offer died, the affiliates just jumped over to the other network. There was no, you know, trying to make it work or, you know, testing these other offers, right? It was just, it all just dissipated, right? Um, so that that entered into another chapter of my life. I mean, we had... At that point, we had hit this like $10 million a year mark, but I had made a goal and I made a video publicly that I wanted to, to get the revenue to hundred million a year. And that was going to take a different model. It was going to take a different approach than, than the 10 million, you know? And, um, we set our sights on that goal, like around 2020, you know, later in 2020 ish and got to work, you know, um, so at that point, we started to get into paper call. Um, we started to build up our media buying team more. We went from having- What made you want to get into paper call though at the time? Like what was a light bulb? 
I think just other affiliates were, were crushing it. Yeah. So like around 2021 was um, the beginning of like the, it was, it was almost like the height of like the Medicare boom, um, I would say. I mean, people were really crushing it on Medicare paper call. Um, and we, we got in the game with that. And also in 2022, ACA started to become more of a thing. And immediately we just started to see some, some good results in that space. So, um, I mean, yeah, we went from doing $10 million in 2020 to doing $30 million in 2022 to $50 million in 2023 to a hundred million. Um, Congrats. I mean, that, that's, man, that's so, crazy. So, yeah, we, we hit the goal that, that we wanted to hit. You know, we, we made this goal back in 2020 that we wanted to hit that specific revenue figure. But, you know, I, I can't take all the credit for that because, you know, it wasn't me. I mean, you know, in order to get to a number like that was all of our team working together. And it was... Peter hustling on the, on the client side of the business with three other people that were bringing in tons and tons of buyers. Um, it was, you know, me hiring and training media buyers, but that was, a, you know, a multi-year process. And by that point, you know, the media buyers that, that were crushing it were people that I had hired years prior, you know, and, um, very little of it had to do with me personally or Peter personally. It was just sort of the collective team just all putting it in, putting in their best. And, um, you know, I can't take all the credit for it or, or, or nor computer, but, um, yeah. We talked about it on stage and I talked that with, about this with Peter a couple of weeks ago at the affiliate summit. I think you guys, you guys are great at hiring. You have a great hiring process. I know a lot of people on your team, they're very, they're, they're all consistent and you seem to have, I don't know. I don't, I don't know why I'd like to talk about the methodology of you guys. I think it's not, I know the media buying side, I know you guys have, you have very stringent criteria. You interview a hundred people and you, you'll, you'll hire one out of those people. Right. But I think that that's really an art to be able to do that. And I, I've had, I've struggled with that very much. So that's been one of my struggles, yeah. you know, but yeah, you can't, two of you can get to 10 million, but you're not going to, those two won't get to fucking hundred million. It's not going to happen. You'd be dead. Yeah. Right, if you got the, that number, with the yeah. two. but you, it takes a team, man. So, but the hiring process is so important. I, I fucking struggle with it. So. I would ask you, I'm always asking for advice for me, for the audience, because I think that's the, that's the, like that, that fine line, man, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. So I think that we've taken a different approach to hiring. I think when other people look to hire a media buyer, they might go on like indeed.com and make like a job listing for like a media buyer. And mm -hmm. they'll have people that have worked at ad agencies or whatever. Right. And, um, they got to convince them to work with them or they got to, you know, whatever right um and that can still work i know people that have built great teams just off of like job sites and stuff like that but our team our team building process was more of an organic process where we started putting this work into this sort of training and coaching like back in like 2019 to where we built up a small following i mean our our youtube channel is not big i mean we have about four thousand people that watch it, but these are all diehard affiliates. And a lot of them have gone through our old coaching programs or have been learning just from the organic content on the YouTube channel. Nowadays, we just do everything for free. We don't, we don't sell courses. We haven't done that in five years. I mean, we just put out free content and our approach has been always to, to lead with value and to give first. Yeah. And through that approach, I believe in this world that what you give, you get, right? The law of reciprocity, call it karma, you know, whatever you want to call it, right? But what you put into this world is what you'll get out. And a lot of times I didn't know why I was doing certain things, you know, but I just had sort of this gut feeling, this voice that was just telling me to just, to just do it, right? Like at one point we ended up leaking a winning campaign of ours that we were still running at that point, you know, where I basically, there's this hernia mesh mass tort at the time. And it was like making good money for us. I mean, like we were spending a thousand a day, making like 3000 a day back. I mean, it was a great campaign. Mm -hmm. And I basically recorded the whole ad campaign, my real ads, like the real lander. And I put it on a case study and I, I think we were selling it for like $7 or something like that. Right. I just put like some minimal, you know, 
extremely low price point for, for something of that value, right? And I just, I just emailed it out for free to my list, right? And there were so many people that went through that were, that were just like, holy shit, like I can't believe you just shared this. And like they went on and immediately became successful affiliates because, you know, that one offer died out like pretty quickly. You know how torts are, like yeah. they're good one yeah. month and bad the next, right? But immediately they were like succeeding as affiliates and they were like, well, I, you know, I can't do all this on my own. I don't, I can't manage the whole client side of the business. I don't have the cash flow to do all this. Like you're the one who put me onto this. Like, can I just come work with you? It's like, we just had armies of people that were interested in working with us and, and still do to this day. Right. I mean, more people than we could ever work with apply. And, you know, if you've applied to one of our hiring rounds and you, you haven't been accepted, don't take it personally. There's only, you know, so much capacity that we have. I mean, right now our entire company is about 25 people and about 13 media buyers, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not like there's just infinite spots on the media buying team, but maybe once every six months we'll do a hiring announcement. And from all the good faith and, and value that we've built in the industry over the years, it comes back to us, you know, by people basically willing to, to join our, our team and, and to work with us. And, and I appreciate that. And, and I'm very grateful to be in that position. Yeah, it's an incredible story because you, what you talk about with value, giving the value, like that seven dollar course, like it brought you, you, you probably made people millionaires from doing that, right? And easily, man. And you didn't, easily. so you didn't see initial um, financial gain from that, but long term you did because you, you, you had these elites, you bring them value, so they want to give you value back, and they're loyal to you, right? So that, exactly, that yeah. might be one of the keys right there. Exactly, yeah. I think you know, of course, you you got to be careful in what you share in a sense. I mean, you, of course you don't want to just leak all of your winning stuff or yeah. what's working for you. Right. But in that sense, like I knew that that campaign wasn't going to be running forever. I knew that maybe it had like a short runway, but I knew how valuable it would be for people. And maybe that one campaign wasn't going to be the thing that they do forever. Right. But maybe it was good for a month or something, right? And, and maybe they could take that and they could do it with other tort offers or just apply to other lead gen verticals, right? And that's exactly what people did, you know? And um, I think, of course, you need to be careful about leaking your alpha, right? I think everybody, all these affiliates in this space, we all have our secret sauce, right? And of course, you don't want to just give that away because then um, you're going to like, you're going to ruin your business. Like straight up, I'm, I'm being transparent. Like I'm a guy that loves to share value with people, but it has to be done in a way that, that isn't going to just like permanently take all the wind out of your sale, like indefinitely in business. Right. So it's like, yeah, I had this one campaign. That was one of many things that we were doing. It was a short term thing. People got a shitload of value out of that. You know, did it permanently take all the wind out of my sale with, you know, my next year in business or five years or whatever? No, but um, it was so valuable to people that, you know, that value came back to me. So yeah, I wouldn't, I would challenge and encourage other people to share value in a space in a way that could really help other people, but be mindful to do it in a way that isn't going to necessarily wreck your business or take all the wind out of your own sale. I think there needs to be some, um, some sort of smart way to do it. Right. And, um, I think the best way to do it is just to share what you feel comfortable with and just do it for free. You know, um, you don't have to, I think where people get caught up is like, if they try to, you know, you know, get sucked into like selling a high ticket program or something like that. I mean, we sold one at one point that was extremely valuable, but like, it kind of like ruined our business. <laughs> like, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, yeah, we, why, you why know, did it ruin your business? Because I, I know there's high margins behind that stuff, right? So I was, I was wondering that myself because I knew you guys did that. And I, I wondered what caused you to stop. So I, I think it's important. I need to rephrase that. It didn't ruin yeah. our business. It ruined the, the campaigns that we were running at the time. you took the focus away from those campaigns? Is that what it was? Or? So, I mean, at, in that course, like we had about three different campaigns that we were running. It was like rent to own, auto loan, and like EDU, right? It was like nursing EDU. We just took all the campaigns that were working for us and we put them in the course, right? And when 400 people went through the course and all 400 of them started running the campaigns, they immediately died, you know? Yeah. And it was like our affiliate campaigns like immediately died <laughs> upon launching it. And we were like, fuck, you know? But, you know, 
I, I had a longer term vision than that. You know what I mean? And, and we had to basically short term pivot to like building that network business and, and, you know, do other things in the space before we built up, you know, we, before we decided to get into these other, you know, paper call campaigns and do all that. Right. Um, so I think it's important to share value. I think it's important to help others. I think you need to do it in a way that's not going to just wreck your own business, you know? So just be, be, um, be, be savvy, you know, what you put into this world is what you get out. And, you know, the, the more people that you can help, the more value that you can bring, the more value will flow back to you. Right. So I would challenge, I would challenge you guys to think about that. You know, everyone likes to keep everything so close to the chest, but you know, is it really going to matter if you share with somebody something that, you know, you know, isn't necessarily going to ruin your business, but could help, you know, thousands and thousands of people get on track with theirs. And, and, you know, I, I think that that's a worthy trade-off. Yeah, I agree. And at the end of the day, you know, everyone's looking for, they're looking for, they're, there's hope, right? That's what hope is. Politics is all hope. You hope this person wins that they're going to change your life or whatever, right? People get yeah. like, it comes like a religion. So religion, I'm not trying to get like all crazy here, but like everything's like hope. So when you, when you provide value to somebody, that you give that person hope that, hey, I can have a better life. This person doing what they're teaching me. And then th there's like a commitment. You become like, you become almost become like family to like, you help them hit that goal and they feel loyal to you. For sure. Yeah. I mean, um, I think, I think in one sense, like gratitude as a short memory, you know, like I yeah. think that there was a lot of people that I put onto this space that like yeah. literally changed their life. But then a month later, like they're pretending like they all did it and they all figured it out. Right. So it's like, I don't know. Like you kind of need to expect that, but it's more about just like the, the, yeah, the general value that you're putting into other people's life is going to come back to you in ways that you won't expect. Right. Yeah. And, and what happened though, those people, they're not in your wavelength or they're, they're, they're in a different wavelength. So you, you won't, you won't attract those people. They'll go their way. Yeah. But the ones that are on your wavelength, you'll attract those people. And then that yes. becomes, and you don't need a huge circle. You just need a tight circle. Yes. Good people. So that, that's, it, it yeah. just, it's like natural. Like, I, I don't care if, you know, a thousand people took it and then, you know, they pretended like they figured it all out, out on themselves. Like, of course that's going to happen. Right. But, you know, maybe 10 of these people are like super loyal media buyers that work with us for years and years and years. And we do huge numbers together and, you know, build massive loyalty and, mm -hmm. and have a long-term relationship. It's like, all right, cool. Like, you know, now, now we're getting somewhere, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but anyways, you know, it's, it's been a lot of up and down in this really, in this, um, in this industry. And, um, you know, I'm grateful to be where we are today. Um, you know, I'm grateful to, to have done what we've done, but you know, to me, like it, it doesn't even feel like that much, you know, I mean, I guess I've hmm. done maybe more affiliate revenue than than more than most affiliates but like to me it feels like i'm just getting started and it and it feels like there's so much more of this um journey that's yet to play out you yeah. know oh it's great yeah so you can you start at 17 right you were 30 now yeah so 13 years that's a long time to be dedicated so you but you're still a lot young man i mean you do another 13 years imagine where you're going to be at 43 so this ties into my next question to you is i mean what we're like, what's the next goal? I mean, you, you, you hit the, you hit nine figures, right? I mean, you trying to go to a billion or like, what, what's, what, what do you, what is, or is it, does that even matter anymore? Like, what, what is like, what, what's, yeah. the, what's the goal? So, I mean, I think at this point, like we've just been focused as being like pure affiliates, right? And like, we've proven that we can, you know, run massively high volume campaigns and, you know, put up some of the biggest numbers as affiliates, right? But I think um, what I feel like I want to move towards maybe like in an, you know, Q1 or Q2 of next year is actually starting to build something that I, that I own on the offer side. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't really have like concrete plans yet, but I, I want to own, I want to be the advertiser, you know? Um, yeah. And I think that's the next transition for me because, you know, this affiliate model is great for like a lifestyle business. Like you can make, you know, millions of dollars and have, you know, an epic lifestyle. Like I live, you know, a block from the water in San Diego and, you know, a $3 million house. I live right from, you know, a block from the most epic surf break where like every weekend my life is like a vacation, man. Like it's, it's nice. sick. Right. But the affiliate business in itself, being a media buyer is sort of like a lifestyle cash flow business. And I think that like 
I'm kind of ready to move into more of like the sellable business, you know, maybe owning like an insurance ag agency, right? Yeah. I mean, that would be kind of the next goal for me. And at that point, I wouldn't necessarily be as focused as like, you know, I'm just the revenue numbers of just like hitting a billion or something, right? It'd be more like, okay, let me build an insurance brokerage where I've got a hundred licensed agents and like I've got, you know, concrete sellable, you know, value where I could sell this business at any time for multiples on multiples of just the revenue, right? Um, and honestly, like we're not, we're not even there yet. I mean, I think we're going to put in another big quarter here, like in Q4 and just be focused purely on the traffic and the media buying. But I think like in, in 2024 is going to begin to be a transition for us from being pure affiliates to like owning it, you know? Yeah. And, and in our, in our space, like we're mainly focused like insurance paper call, right? So owning the insurance brokerage that you're driving the calls into is a huge next step for us that, that, you know, in, in my, in my mind, I know is the right way for us, you know, for the next like 10 years. Yeah. It makes yeah. all the sense in the world. You know how to generate the leads. You got that down pat. Now you get the second part of the equation and only offer. Yeah. And yeah. I mean like doing, doing a hundred million a year is like cool, but like, it's like, yeah, like it's like when you go try to exit and like your whole business is just like an ad campaign or something, you know, and it's yeah. like, you don't even own the offer and it's like the offers are up and down. The ad is like up and down every week. It's just like, that's, that's not really that attractive to like an actual like buyer, you know? Yeah. And like, I feel like that's something that not a lot of people talk about, but yeah. there's nothing wrong with being an affiliate. I've, I've enjoyed being an affiliate for 10 years. You know, we've enjoyed, you know, the money that could be made as an affiliate, but you know, the bigger step in business is building like a sellable asset, you know, um, obviously. Yeah. yeah, you're right. The thing is too, it comes down to, you strike me as a person. I think this is what makes you successful. You do a lot of, you read a lot of books, right? You listen to a lot of podcasts. You're always self-developing. You look to optimize yourself. So as a business owner, and I think it's really amazing what you said, because the fact that a lot of people would listen to like, man, if I did a hundred million in revenue, man, I fucking, I don't know, I'd retire or whatever. They, they, they like, I don't need to do anymore, but you, you don't see things that way. Cause it's, it's all about the journey, right? At the end of the day. And at yeah. 30 years old, you know, you haven't reached your peak. This is this is part of it. And who knows where you'll be. It's, it might not be a number. It's about having that fulfillment. Like that, your, your dream is a hit. One of your dreams was to hit a hundred million. You hit that. What's the next dream? Yeah. Right now your next dream is to own your own offer. Yeah. Right. So once you hit that, there'll probably be something else. Right. So that, that's really what it comes down to at the end of the day. It's the pursuit of, of your dreams. And it's not yeah. always a number, man. There's always something else behind it. If you do the right thing, then the number usually comes. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, um, I don't think I'd ever be happy just like sitting on the beach, like, you know, sipping coconuts. I mean, I love to surf. <laughs> right. And like, yeah. When I'm out in the, in the, in the ocean, like surfing on the weekends, I'm euphoric. You know what I mean? Especially like after grinding all week and like every day can be like pretty stressful. If you have like a big business, it's just something you get used to. Right. But it's like these days off that I have are like, like I, I could, I could be on vacation. I'm euphoric, you know, just to have two days where I could just do, do me and, you know, do only what I want to do. Right. But I think you know, as a man in your life, you need conquests. You need something that you're actively conquering, right? right. And this whole mindset of like, I'm going to hit a certain number amount and I'm just going to retire and I'm going to, you know, kick my feet up in a beach chair and, and drink coconuts. I, you know, try doing that for, for, for two weeks, you know, oh, you lose and your see mind. if you're happy. You know what I mean? And you'll realize immediately that that's not what's going to make you happy. You know, every day every day is like a battle in business, you know, especially as you get bigger in business, every hour day, there's problems. New challenges. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, especially as you start working with more and more people and there's more and more things that you got to manage. I mean, every five minutes I've got messages coming in, Hey, I'm having a problem with this. Okay. This isn't working. All right. You know, whatever. Right. It's like, it, it, it quite literally feels like war. You know what I mean? But it's like, I feel like as a man, like you kind of need that, it, for me, at least, like, I feel like I need that, that level of like chaos in my life, you know? Yeah. And, um, I kind of like, I kind of like thrive off that shit, you know? Like at first I, at first I sort of had like a negative attitude about it. Like when I first got started, like I wanted to work the least amount possible and make, you know, the most amount that I could working the least. But now it's just like, I'm just going to grind and, and, you know, do it in a way that I can do sustainably you know, while keeping these, these other areas in my life in check, like my health, 
My health is my number one priority. I work out every single day. You know, my relationship's a big priority. I make sure to spend quality time with my wife every day. And it's all about keeping these areas in check, right? But it's not about just like hitting a certain number and, and just like kicking your feet up. I mean, I, I think that that's something that a lot of people like strive for, but I mean, maybe at a certain age of retirement, it makes sense, right? But I mean, at 30, that that's absolutely yes, crazy yeah. to be thinking about doing, you know? Um, so anyways, it's, it's um, embrace the chaos, you know? That's what I say. And, and um, your, your ability to manage stress is going to be the ceiling of your potential. So the more business that you do, the more stress that comes with it. Exactly. It's, it's, they go hand in hand. So in order to make more money, you need to make, do more business. And in order to do more business, you need to handle more stress, right? And that's where sort of this personal development comes in where a lot of stress is perceptive. You know what I mean? A lot of stress comes down to like your own self-talk about it. You know what I mean? You know, a lot of people will, will say things to themselves like, oh, the stress is killing me or, oh, I can't do this anymore, you know? But it's like, I, I tell my, I like, even when the most stressful shit's going on, I'm just like, all right, like bring it, you know? Like when, when a day's going on where it's like quiet, I'm like, all right, like bring it on. Like let's, let's get some more shit going. Like I, let's, Let's spin up more business. Like I'm not. There's not enough chaos going You're on going right now. Like, it. Rather yeah, running, like, yeah, it's interesting. Like if if I have like a quiet day, I'll I'll immediately be thinking about like, okay, like, do we need to go into a hiring round? Do I need you know like five new hires that I'm trying to train at once? Like, do we need, you know, thirty new clients? Like, what is what do we need right now? Like, if things are too calm and like comfortable it means that you're doing something wrong yeah, you're you know? right about that you, yeah. need, you need to be living in an uncomfortable area but not to a point where it's going to like destroy your life like i think in that one point you know when it was just the two of us running the network like it was um it wasn't it wasn't good right yeah. but i think you need to push it like you need to go up to your comfort zone and you need to basically push it like right above that you know so if your comfort zone is like let's say like you know uh uh in in uh, an eight out of 10 or something on like the, the work side, like push it up to like a 10 out of 10 or like, you know, whatever, whatever you're going to be like slightly uncomfortable doing and that'll just become the new norm. And then you'll adjust to that. And then you can, once you adjust to that, you can push it up a little bit more, you know? Yeah, got, um, guys, that was amazing. Well, you said it got me thinking too, you know, it's, it's, that's what I love about this show is that we get people like you that you, you have a different mindset than the other guests and each guest has a different mindset, but you can learn from each one of them. I mean, I think that embrace the chaos, that's huge. There's always gonna be chaos in our fucking business, any yeah. business, it's no matter what you're in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, um, a lot of it's just about staying calm too, right? I mean, I think one of the most important qualities of being in business or even just being a media buyer is your ability to stay calm because things are gonna be so volatile that, you know, a calm, a calm person is somebody who's gonna be making better decisions. They're gonna be, you know, able to, communicate more clearly with other people and they're going to be able to manage their own emotions and not, you know, blow up themselves. Right. So, I mean, of course, everybody has their like, you know, tricks or whatever that they do, you know, to stay calm, whether it be exercise, whether, you know, for me, I like, I like surfing. I like, you know, going, even if there's no waves, I'll just go sit out in the ocean for an hour. And it's like, I'll, I'll literally go from being, you know, it, you know, stress. I mean, yeah, of course I, I get stressed every single day. Right. But I've learned how to bring myself out of those states. And like when I'm out in there in the water for an hour from like, you know, let's say like six to seven o'clock or whatever it is, I'm on, I'm on vacation, man. I could be, you know, I could be in Fiji. You know what I mean? It's like, when I come back from that, like I'm completely calm. You know what I mean? It's like, you need to, you need to figure out like how you're going to manage your own stress and, and, you know, I, I think exercise is the best thing to do. I mean, some days I'll wake up at six in the morning, get a workout in for an hour. And then after work at six o'clock, I'll go surfing. It's like, these are like two things that I've, I've learned how to do to, you know, manage my own stress. And that allows me to grind even harder during that work day, you know, and take on even more responsibility and, you know, other things that people couldn't even think about, you know, managing or handling and, you know, all of the all of the problems or whatever right it's like cool like i got it this is just what i do every day right this is just what what i do right i mean it just becomes the norm you know um yeah. so yeah that's that's sort of my my approach to business and um 
you know, of course you need to keep everything in balance and, and prioritize your health as number one, you know, sometimes, you know, people throw the health out the window just to, you know, be on top of the money pile. But when the health goes, you, you don't have shit. So yeah, you yeah. make better good decisions. You make, and you know, it subconsciously, you know, that yeah. that's what it comes down to. And then you make bad decisions because of that. Because I think it affects the confidence when you're healthy. You're healthy. It's true. I work out like crazy. I'm doing Pilates, man. Yeah. So I'm like the only dude in these classes, but bro, it's like, it's humbling. Yeah. I'm shaking like a freaking leaf. But I come out and I feel great. When I'm in there, I'm like, why, why am I in this fucking place? But yeah. I, I come out feeling great. You come then out, you get like a little six yeah. pack. You get cut up. Yeah, it's like, like, oh, what was like, I worried about before? Oh, yeah. yeah, it's handled. Like, it, gives yeah. you that, it gives you like that little bit of an edge, man. So yeah. it's, it's so important. Adam Young talked about that too. He gave a great keynote speech, and his, his number one pillar, number one priority is health. It has to be. It yeah. has to be. Because without yeah. health, you have nothing. You can have all the money in the world, man. You die of a heart attack. You know, 35, 40, it happens all the time. Yeah. It's crazy. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So that's huge. I don't think enough people talk about that, you know, about, about that aspect of it. Yeah. But man, th th this has been amazing. I, I mean, I feel like we can talk for hours and hours and hours, you know. I mean, this, yeah. is, this was great. You guys also have a podcast, um, the Optimized Convert podcast, which is amazing. I recommend everyone listen to that. Yeah, the Optimized yeah. Convert YouTube channel. Peter has a podcast that he's done called the Peter Day Podcast, which is on the Optimized Convert YouTube channel. I'll put out various, you know, affiliate marketing or mindset related content, um, you know, a couple times a month or, or, or so. Um, so yeah, tune into our channel and, um, yeah, appreciate you having us on, having yeah, me for on. Sure. No, yeah. it's, it's great. I've been wanting to have you guys on for a long time, right? I think that I was expecting, I was going to talk a lot about the media buying all that stuff, but, um, I think what you talked about that, that's important. The mindset is so important. Your story is amazing. How you had like $20 a day you would spend, right? Some people might think that you need like you know, 20,000 or 100,000. No, you could start with $20 a day. There's guys who do $10 a day and you start little, you get small victory. That's what leads to the big victory. So yeah. from, from 200, I mean, for $20 a day to, you know, seven figure days, like it's just crazy. So yeah. I think that's just a beautiful thing. And that's a beautiful thing about our industry that you can start with that much knowledge, but if you have that obsession, you want to get better, it'll happen. No matter what the, no matter COVID, no matter stands in your way, you'll figure out how to, how to win, you know? Yeah. And just bet on yourself, you know? I mean, in order to get to that point, we didn't take any money out of the business. You know, I, I took just enough money out of the business to cover my monthly expenses, which is, you know, um, not, not too much. I mean, you know, maybe more than the average person, but you know, compared to, I mean, everyone else, most of the other people in our company make more money than me. I mean, I have one of the lowest salaries in the company, you know, and everything that we make just goes back into growing the business. And, and, um, you know, I'd rather bet on myself and, and, you know, that's sort of the approach that we've taken. And, um, yeah. Uh, great, great way to end up bet on yourself. That's what it comes down to. I love it. How can people find out more about you? Yeah. So check out our YouTube channel, optimize to convert and, uh, go to www.optimizeconvert.com. You can get on our email list. We send out, you know, regular uh, value-based videos and stuff like that. And yeah, just just tune in. Yeah, I'm on that email list. It's great. I, I, I told you on stage, I gave you our CFO, like one of your first episodes, you guys were talking about cash flow, especially when the more you, the more you spend, I mean, the more you make, the more you're going to have to spend, right? You have to spend on the business and, and it gets tight sometimes, right? So yeah. you guys, that, that was one of the best episodes because no one talks about that, I feel Everyone's talking about the numbers are hitting, but they don't talk about, hey, shit gets tight. What do you got to do to make that work? So that's a great, I can't emphasize enough how great that is. Great resource and it's out there for you to get it. So the, the Day Brothers, great people in the industry, great guys, always adding value. We're going to do more shit together. Sure. Definitely, man. I love yeah. it. Let's fucking go, guys. Let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, that was awesome, man. Thank you. Cheers. Man. Yeah.